Well, good morning, everybody. It is the beginning of May. I think it's May 2nd today. So very early May. It is a beautiful morning, although it is going to get hot again today. We've had a crazy kind of heat spell here in Maryland. I'm in Zone 7B, Maryland, just north of Baltimore. We have just had these unseasonably warm temperatures, but it is going to cool off over the weekend. I think today is gonna to be the last real hot day of the week, thank goodness. So I am very surprised that my pink tulips are still holding on after all of the heat that we've had this week. I'm gonna walk you through the gardens, just show you what's happening, the good and the bad. <laughs> and just enjoy some of these things that are just coming into bloom. There are so many pretty things to show you today. If I pan you over to my left, this is one of my obelisk beds. I had just painted this green, kind of like a sagey green obelisk a couple of weeks ago. Did a little video on that and I have all of these tulips that were scattered in this bed. I had kind of been complaining in a previous tour that all I had were yellow and red tulips and orange. There was some orange and no pink, but apparently the pink were just later to bloom. They were a later blooming variety. So now I'm left with all of these beautiful pink tulips that I am just loving so much. They are all tucked in behind my boxwood hedge here. Winter, this is a winter gem boxwood hedge. It is putting on some really nice growth as well. I think that it might be ready to get a little bit of a haircut after the tulips are done. I might be pushing it a little bit with getting into the summer, warm summer temperatures, but I think that I just wanna begin training it a little bit to the shape that I'd like it to eventually be in. And I'm super excited for all of the flowers to come to fill out this area. I have sunflowers and I have some mystic spires, blue salvia back in there. I like to fill this whole area out with zinnias all along this front border. Next spring, I just really want to focus on filling out this whole front border with tulips. Over here, I have some plants tucked in that I'm gonna move. These are some fall in love sweetly anemone that bloom in the fall with real pretty pink flowers, but I'm gonna move them somewhere else so I can really focus on kind of an annual border of tulips and then zinnias all along behind the boxwoods here. And like I said, I have sunflowers, I have hollyhocks, maybe foxglove in the future. I am going to be ordering a trellising system for this big blank wall to see how that works out and if I can get some things to grow up that wall to fill that out. I recently planted some sweet peas all along the bottom of this trellis, of this obelisk I should say, hoping that those begin to take off real soon. I did have some of this allium planted and a lot of it did not even grow for some reason. I just have this tiny little patch right here that is looking beautiful. I think this is the purple sensation allium. And I would also love to spread allium all along the edge here, intermixed with the tulips, all behind the boxwood. I think that they give the garden just this beautiful magical feel. And I think they, those would look so pretty behind the boxwood hedge. You can see I have some more Mystic Spires Salvia coming up. This I was super impressed because last year I did lose it all. This year I have all but one coming back. I just need to buy one. So very, very happy about that. And this is a Limetta hydrangea that is looking super healthy and wow, put on a lot of growth. Just keeps getting bigger every day. This is a Tonto crepe myrtle that is leafing out and looking real healthy. 
and then just this clump of pink tulips loving them i'm guessing that these will be done real soon so that'll be sad but they are looking so so pretty right now i'm just gonna bring you around the corner here from my crepe myrtle and just show you don't mind the stacked chairs and real life I still haven't painted my other two obelisks. <laughs> so they are laying on my patio, hoping to be painted soon, but oh my goodness. So these are Glowmaster Allium right here that I kind of put in a circle here thinking I was gonna have a bird bath in the middle, which I'm still looking for. That is still my plan, but I absolutely love these. Look at that view. And can you see, I'll show you in a minute, but can you see my neighbor's azalea in the background right there? That bright pink bush. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. So again, I would love to fill this bed out with more alliums. I had a whole grouping of daffodils that I'm allowing to die back. I went through and deadheaded all of the spent blooms to just allow their bulbs to collect all the energy for next year and hopefully put on some more pretty pretty blooms, lots of pretty blooms. And then right along the border here, I recently addressed this in my seedling update video where I give you a huge update on all of my seedlings and seeded some more seeds. I've gone a little seed crazy this year. I had tried to seed some poppies and not too many took. I can see some tiny tiny little babies right there and then I just have this grouping over here that for whatever reason really took off these are ladybird poppies and they get this red color with a black center and I was hoping that they would be kind of lining this edge here so next year I am going to have to make sure that I rake back the mulch so that the seedlings can get better established and maybe put a layer of compost down in the fall just to prepare if I wanna put poppies in there. And in this bed, I just think that I'm gonna do a bunch of seeding annuals with zinnias and maybe some cosmos, maybe some of my tall ageratum that I just seeded, if I can get that to grow, surrounding a fountain, if I can find one that I like at the right cost. <laughs> Um, I think would look really pretty for right now and I'll play around with um, you know more established perennials and shrubs as I go but that would be a cost-effective way to kind of fill out this area so oh my goodness I love these allium and that view so pretty right behind our this is derunk boxwoods this hedge is my neighbor's azalea hedge. I look forward to this coming out every year. I cannot get enough of it. It is so pretty. Beautiful pink color. May is the color of purple for me. I have a lot of purple blooming plants and I am loving how they are intermingling with the pink tulips right now enjoying it while it lasts. I have some phlox emerging from the ground right here and limelight prime hydrangea. This royal sunset lily is, is like a real vibrant orangey pinky purple color and it has put on so much growth since last year. I just put those in last year and they have just probably doubled or tripled in size. Very impressed with that lily. I do have a peony right here that I do not think I'm gonna get buds from again. I, this probably is its third year. Peonies can be real slow to take off and I don't think, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get buds again. So I just have to be patient with that. I have an herb pot that I'm planning to fill here very soon. I have all sorts of plants that I have collected that I need to get going on. 
and some strawberries here that I, another thing, I'm going to be moving to a pot. I'm really going to be making some changes to this bed, just moving some things around in the coming weeks, bringing you guys along for all of that. Some daffodils here that are going to be dying back and some allium. I have one right here. These are all purple pillar rows of Sharon right behind the allium. I have allium just kind of speckled all behind in the back of this border and I just want to add more so that that just fills this whole area. And you can maybe see that my cat mint is coming into bloom. Some hookah right here looking so pretty. And I just have this repetition of Buckeye Susan's daisies and pink coneflower all throughout this bed. There's I think four, yeah, four um, basically clumps of that combination of perennials. And I do have some new things to put in and some ideas. And so <laughs> these Rose of Sharon are Proven Winners Rose of Sharon. And you can see that they do seed. I don't know if they seed as prolifically as some of the older varieties of Rose of Sharon. Proven Winners um, focuses on producing plants that you know, don't go to seed quite as readily that are not as bullish <laughs> as some of the older varieties. But I do have to pull out the baby seedlings every year. So they are not completely seedling proof. So they do require a little bit of effort. And I see this little clump. I am not sure if this is a columbine or what that is, but I'm very curious. It's good to always observe what's growing uh, not all things are going to be weeds or need yanked. Some of them might be beautiful plants. Look at this cat mint. This is the denim and lace. Uh, not denim and lace. I always want to say Russian sage. This is cat mint. This is the cat's pajamas cat mint or nepeta. Stays nice and small and tidy and I just love it. I have more to add. I'm going to be kind of moving it around. And some iris. Oh my word. These have really exploded in the past day with their blooms. They are looking so pretty. I love them. This combination with the catmint and that hookara and the iris and the pink tulips. So pretty. Look at that purple iris. This has put on so much growth over the past year. Love it. This is the Helen von Stein lamb's ear that has also just multiplied that I'm gonna be dividing here real soon. And tucked back behind is a little lime hydrangea. More allium. I just saw a bee fly onto the allium. They love the allium. Great for pollinators. I was walking along and I couldn't believe my eyes, but I have a dahlia that came back. This is the Mystic Illusion Dahlia that I thought that I had dug up all of the tubers and I had left some other tubers in the ground, my Thomas Edison, but they had not come back. But here is a Mystic Illusion Dahlia coming back. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome. So that made my day. Right behind that is another clump of iris looking so beautiful. I just love that purple color mixed with the pinks. So, so pretty. More cat mint over here. Okay, 
Here's a nice clump of allium, Globemaster allium right here. And I'm absolutely loving this Twombly's Red Sentinel Japanese Maple. My husband and I both absolutely love it. It is just so beautiful, that bright red foliage. It stays nice and tidy, probably about four to five feet wide and maybe 10 to 15 feet tall. Oh my goodness, I can't wait until it puts on more growth. It's just so pretty. Tucked in front of this red, red uh, Japanese maple is this really cute bench that my mom gave me from her garden. I really love it so much. I think it adds such a sweet little touch. I'm really wanting to add more structural elements like this into this garden, like arbors and benches and bird baths, just to add that extra layer of interest. I got some really good suggestions. Oh my gosh, those birds just freaked me out. <laughs> they came right out of the green giants and scared me half to death. <laughs> the birds are loving the warm weather. But anyway, I was asking for suggestions. They are just right there. <laughs> I'm getting nervous they're gonna fly on my head. Um, about what to plant kind of around and under this bench. Um, since it's not really a sitting bench, but it has these really great supports there to grow things. And um, Wendy, you had suggested a, peony, or a couple of peonies, which I think would be beautiful. And somebody else suggested a clematis rambling all over the bench. I'm wondering if I could do both, if that would be feasible, I'm not sure. But for this year, I think that I'm gonna do just some annuals just to keep the cost down. I may sprinkle some zinnia seed underneath there, or I don't know, not, I haven't quite decided, but um, those are awesome ideas for the future. I'm definitely gonna keep them in mind. Right behind, I have foxglove that are getting taller and taller every day. I'm super excited to see these grow. These are totally rabbit resistant. That makes me very happy. I'm going to be adding more foxglove throughout my garden areas for sure. I have some wee white hydrangeas coming in that I'm gonna have to rearrange a little bit. They're not quite aligning with that bench like I want them to. And I think I might have lost one. There was supposed to be one back in there also. There were five here, but I'm only seeing four. So, but I really am enjoying this little area and just being able to play around with it in the coming years will be really fun. So one last look at the border down there. All that pretty purple, so pretty. All right, I'm just gonna bring you around and we're gonna go walk past my green giants and we're gonna check out my shade beds right down here. Down here, it's a work in progress, as is every, every garden, right? I, obviously my obelisks are not in the bed, in this bed right now because they are waiting to get painted. But I recently added this April Remembered Camellia down here and these um, hosta that I divided from hostas out on my front porch. They are looking so good. Already really big, really nice size. Loving how they are doing. And then this camellia is putting on some really nice growth. I saw the other day that it has sent out these new shoots, which is a really good sign. And there is one flower left to show you, probably my last flower. Isn't that so pretty? I cannot wait until this really begins to put on growth and fill out this whole area. These guys 
I think it'll get like six to eight feet tall, I believe. So it'll really fill out this space and I think like five feet wide. So super excited to see that grow. I did set out my hummingbird feeders, finally waiting on some hummingbirds to find those. Love watching them. And right at the base of my um, obelisks, I have these pink mink clematis planted that are really wanting to climb. So I really need to get those done. It's just been such a busy week. I just can't fit everything in, it seems. This whole area I'm going to be doing in patience. And I do have some more of this all gold Hanakloa Hakoni grass, Japanese um, forest grass to put in here, which I really just want to kind of fill out the edge of this border in front of these hydrangea. These are Annabelle hydrangea, looking beautiful, really healthy. And of course, I'm gonna every year just work on adding a few more perennials, a few more, you know, shrubs, slowly kind of working at this space. More pink pink clematis rambling all over the ground. And my hellebore are looking really nice that I put in this year. Lots of daffodil foliage in this bed to die back and hosta and fern. Right in here, I had planted three um, columbine plants last year. They were super beautiful pink. I just loved them so much. All I see are a few seedlings popping up, which I'm not anticipating will do much this year, but maybe next year. So I'm just gonna try to let them do their thing and put on as much growth as they can for this year. I really wish I would have bought seed to um, ensure that I had some columbine plants this year, but I'll remember that for next year. And this area is centerpiece by an Autumn Brilliance um, service berry and the rabbits love this area. They have been munching on my ferns. This one is probably the nicest looking. This is a Brilliance Autumn Fern. You can see it comes out with this real pretty orangey reddish um, color. Probably see it more over here a little bit better. But they have really been after these two in particular. I just love these ferns. I wish the rabbits did not. <laughs> and I have some hookera down here that they also were really after. I think this is the wild berry hookera. Along with some crocus foliage that I really never saw blooms from because of the rabbits. And lots of hosta. I am going to have to come in and work on this area because the hosta have kind of taken over and gotten a lot bigger from last year. So I'm gonna have to do some dividing and some moving around. You can see that they just have put on a lot of girth. This is the wee hosta. And I have a pretty sky hosta tucked back in there that I didn't realize was there. And some um, blue halcyon putting on really beautiful blue foliage right now. And this is an elegant hosta, but it's completely covering up my viburnum. I just put in these sweet taco viburnum this past uh, March, I think. And yeah, they're just completely covering that up. Beautiful woo la la hosta back there. Oh, it's so pretty getting so big this year. Just don't have a ton of space in this bed to work with, which is the case for my whole yard, all of my gardens. And then I have the same kind of pattern right back in here, along with a Casablanca lily that I'm gonna have to move a little bit. And I stuck another grouping of hosta right here from my front porch as well. And these are, I'm assuming the Patriot hosta, they were here in my front porch when we moved in, but I'm, I think they're the Patriot hosta, but 
think that those are really pretty. I just need to go in and do some dividing and some moving around just to keep everything looking tidy and kind of fitting this um, whole space appropriately. I'm gonna bring you in through my other gate where we have two incredible hydrangeas. The one on the left is really putting on some nice growth and we have a beautiful Laura Petalum here that is still blooming. I'll show you these flowers. They're so pretty. I'm gonna have to give this guy a good haircut when it's done. And I would love in the future to put an arbor over this gate as well as the other gate. That's definitely a future goal. And as you walk in, I did put this metal trellis right here that I have, I bought something that I'm planning to climb up it for at least to this year. And I'll probably move the sedum a little bit you know, to the front of this trellis. And we have some Dragon Lady Hollies here that shield us from the street real nicely from our hot tub area right over there. And eventually will give us a little more privacy on our deck as well. And then this area I'm also is just a work in progress. I have some daffodils that will die back. I never got to see blooms on my creeping flocks because of the rabbits. This one they decimated and the other two they worked on. So those never bloomed for me this year, but I I have a little plant back there that I guess I'm showing you. <laughs> I kind of forgot I put it there. Um, I'm going to be adding this oh so easy red rose right here in the middle. And then I have a denim and lace Russian sage that I'm thinking of putting in front with two more. So three, a grouping of three in front of the rose, I think will be really pretty. And then just playing around with the front here with some perennials and some annuals. So that is kind of my plan. I have a beautiful geranium in the distance right there. I will go show you geranium macrorhizome. Is that how you say it? Just a traditional perennial geranium that is gorgeous. This is the little path we have leading out from our patio and I just stuck this here to fill out this area. It's already starting to put on some blooms. It gets these beautiful kind of pinky white blooms and it just goes to town. It is an amazing ground cover. It is not invasive. It is super easy to control. So I can go in and I can just take out some of these um, sections that are encroaching on this walkway a little too much. I can just pull it out super easy. I could stick it in another part of my garden if I wanted to. I would really love to fill out in between the stones with a creeping thyme. I think would be really nice. And then right on the left here, I added this purple um, smoke bush. It is a uh, the dwarf dwarf variety. Now I'm blanking on the name. Proven winners. I'll put it up on the screen, but it stays a little bit, oh, black Winecraft, Winecraft, black smoke bush. It's actually putting on flowers, which I'm kind of surprised about. I cut it way back this past year. I really don't care for the flowers, honestly. I just really love the foliage and I'm really gonna keep it tidy in this space because we have our Hose link right here so I don't want it to go you know above the hose link height where the where the hose comes out right there so I think I'm gonna like that there if I can keep it in check and then you know thinking about what I could plant around it there's always empty spaces that you can fill <laughs> no matter how small your garden really is there's always opportunity and on the left here, I have Sweet Tucker Viburnum. I'm going to be transitioning or keeping clipped into a hedge and some more beautiful pink tulips. 
my birdhouse that I painted. I got this from Aldi and did a little bit of a makeover on it. Made a little video about that is hanging in there. I've seen birds flying in and out. The other day I saw two birds fighting over it. I think they were fighting. I think I, I can insert a video of them here, but they seem to be liking it. Right down here, I had planted some delphinium that I grew from seed. Only one of them took off from last year. So that'll be kind of fun to watch that bloom. I do have more delphinium that I winter sowed that I'm planning to put in this space. It's the magic blue delphinium. I just want to surround that little area with delphinium. And then I want to do annuals in the front here, um, possibly zinnias all along the garden edge here, maybe intermixed with some other things in front of the viburnum. So looking real pretty. I'm going to show you what's going on in the front and side yards quick. This is another Laura Petalum. This is uh, ever, it's like a red Laura Petalum, only because it gets red in the fall. But it has these beautiful pinky magenta blooms in the spring and this gorgeous dark purple and green foliage. So pretty. We will keep that trimmed to the height of the porch right there. And right below it, I have this fall in love sweetly anemone, Japanese anemone that will bloom in the fall. And for a summer bloomer, I have three incredible hydrangeas that are looking really nice since last year. I planted them as rural tiny babies last year. I have room to put stuff in front and really all along here. Oh, I have to go look at my white Julia right there. Let's go see what's going on. So this is not a glamorous, glamorous area. This is our gas meter we had to have replaced and had to cut this way back. And I didn't think I was going to see any blooms, but I'm seeing blooms. That is exciting. Look at that. So pretty. That makes me really happy to see. So we have lots of space right in here. This is a tricky area. These four here, the Wygelia and the Laura Petalum. We added that other Laura Petalum just to kind of bring consistency, but they're really probably not the most appropriate plants for this space. We really needed something with height because you can see our house is <laughs> so tall and probably needed something with height right there, but just have not wanted to replace that. So I don't know, I really struggle with what to do on this side. I'm sure it'll be evolving over the years. Let's go see around the porch. My Jane Magnolia is just about done. There's still a few blooms left on it, but definitely past its prime. These hosta I had transplanted divided and transplanted from the front here they are more patriot hosta looking really nice i believe i lost a hookera which actually surprises me this is the purple palace hookera and they're supposed to be super hardy i don't know i might see a teeny bit of growth but they're supposed to be hardy and long lasting it's just an older form of hookera i did transplant these this year so this one is alive, but it's not looking the best and it's getting eaten, I think, <laughs> by the rabbits. And then there's that one down there. So I don't know. I'll see if I can find another one when I go to the nursery. I just have a patch of lamb's ear here. This is the traditional lamb's ear that I'm probably going to replace with the Helen Von Stein. It needs divided. It's, you can see, it is bare. In the middle here that's a sign that it needs divided and it just spreads too much for me and, and i don't love the flower shoots it puts up the von, helen von stein does not put up flower shoots which is very nice 
these tulips are done. <laughs> they are ready to be taken out and replaced with my annuals. My boxwood hedge that I put in a few weeks ago is looking really nice. And these Nandina that I will eventually replace with hydrangea are beginning to fill out again since I cut them back. They are putting on some new growth. This patch of liriope is looking good, beginning to take off. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that contained into this little section right here in front of the sidewalk that we can step on and it won't skip a beat. It won't mind that at all. And I have plants to fill my urn right there. Try to ignore my porch. I have a whole plant stash on my porch and it is a disaster. Lots to do over the coming weeks. And right over here, I'm gonna show you my ajuga looking so pretty right now. I put this ajuga in last year. It has taken off like crazy. I did lose one in the middle here. I had one in the center, but my goodness, you see how it's just spreading. And these flowers, the purple flowers are so pretty. I love them. So they're just gonna kind of take over this area and surround this boxwood. I think it'll look real pretty and I won't have to worry about keeping it contained because it's already contained by all the concrete. Bringing you to the right side of my house is the last side bed that we have. We have a little flagstone pathway here and these are so they sweet flag ogon grass. They are not looking hot at all. I think they may have to go. <laughs> I don't know. They look half dead. I bought them on clearance last year. Was hoping they'd be good. They're half alive, <laughs> but it's really not doing well. So I'll have to think about those. My little um, globe blue spruce, dwarf globe blue spruce, is putting on its fresh set of needles. They look so vibrant when they come out in the spring like this. And it's real soft too, to the touch, the, the new fresh needles they almost feel like rubber like fake so pretty have a little oh uh, let's see this was a rutabecchia that's coming back it was like an orange color and my clematis is growing this is a jolly good clematis not blooming yet i put this in last year so it might get some blooms this year these are some more oh so easy double red roses that are looking fabulous that I that this is the same one that I'm putting in over in my holly bed I just really like using repetition of plants a little bit I feel like it brings just a little more cohesion to everything and this is a merlot red bud that is just about done flowering the leaves turn this Beautiful burgundy red, more low red, I guess, color. So pretty. Right below the red bud, I have more winter gem box with that also need a trim. Probably do those at the same time I do the others. I've waited too long, probably, but. I may still do that. An incredible hydrangea. Wow, that one is looking really good. That put on a lot of growth. And in front of the roses, I have these allium, serendipity allium. They get pretty purple ball, ball flowers in the summertime. They look super pretty in front of the roses. This one isn't looking too good. I'm not sure why, but it's a lot smaller than the others. So hopefully that's okay. But they've really exploded in growth too. As have my Daisy Me Daisies. This is a proven winner's variety. They will bloom all summer long, backed by a red beauty holly. 
Eventually it would be really fun to put some trellises on this wall, maybe some black metal trellises with some clematis or something growing up just to fill out that wall a little bit. And this will get about eight feet tall. So that'll be nice when that starts growing, but still lots of planting room to add in things. I like a full garden. I don't like all this mulch, but slowly but surely getting there. And look at my rhododendron. It's starting to bloom. I see a bloom. There we go. So these, I have one over here and then don't mind my air conditioning unit, <laughs> one on the other side. I'd love to figure out something to conceal that air conditioning unit. And some more Autumn Joy sedum right in front. And that is the end of my early May garden tour give you guys one last glimpse of the pink tulips how the backyard is looking just beautiful thank you so much for joining me for my early May garden tour I appreciate it so much I was going to do a weekly garden tour but I think that what I'm gonna do is an early mid and late garden tour just because sometimes I feel like week to week there isn't a whole lot to show, but I feel like if I do three walkthroughs a month, that would allow me to keep you guys up on what's changing and also just do different videos. I can really, I feel like two videos a week is most feasible for me. Um, I'd love to do three, but I can't, two, two is already hard enough. So um, that'll just give me more room to do different videos other than garden walkthroughs. So I hope that you are all doing well and that you have a great day and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.